was um, a part of a recent series called On the Edge, and there's Kitten and Madeline, which is exploring mental illness. And Madeline is uh, about a young woman suffering from schizophrenia, and it, it shows her within the context of her family, a mother, father, and a sister. And so it, it's showing the different realities of each of those people in relation to her and her reality. The way I look at the play, I mean, the title is Madeline. So within Madeline is the word mad. Um, but interestingly, the, uh, the name of her mother is also Madeline. So for me, the play brings into question uh, how we categorise madness. And in this particular family, it seems that there are various conveniences for being able to label one of the members mad and a very in, some inconveniences uh, of what the young Madeline, the daughter, how she behaves. And the play in many ways is about um, how the rest of the family um, deal with, think about, uh, respond to Madeline, the daughter, and also their own um, ways and each other's ways of, of treating her. The work has always been engaging in the relationship between inner and outer realities and to a certain extent uh, exploring the interface between the conscious and unconscious, so the sort of social world and the more primeval world. Um, and so th this particular um, project, On the Edge, is pushing into exploring the boundaries of the mentally ill, which are quite differently positioned uh, socially in particular and psychically. So the work itself is, is, is always concerned with both the physical and the psychic sides of reality. Um, I am in fact both a writer and director and so sometimes people wonder whether my work is accessible for other directors. Uh, it's probably the, the case that I would always want to direct something first and once I've directed it um, then it becomes accessible for someone else. I think Madeline is, is fairly strong in its structure and form and, and is actually accessible for another director. Um, and you know that is less the case with some of the scripts. But because there, there is the underpinning of the ordinary world, like the family there, and the juxtaposition exists between the family, so it's a grounded reality, an everyday reality, and the inner world of Madeline, uh, that actually creates a strong context that is accessible. However, the, the casting of the Madeline figure would have to... Um, that. You'd need a very strong performer who's got a lot of courage. And uh, I had that, uh, a person like that for, for this produ production. Uh, but we did do a lot of incredibly detailed work, particularly um, on her inner monologues, because uh, they had a logic of their own, the monologues, and her world had a logic of its own. And for the actor, it, there, there wasn't... Um, a really direct road into that socially. And so she worked very hard on um, finding the links. And we even did rehearsals where she did drew charts and created um, diagrams for herself, actually in much the same way as, as quite often a psychotic person might. And so she worked very, very slowly and in great detail so that she really had images and, and pictures so that her reality, her inner reality was very, very strong. Because it's a monologue and not a dialogue, she has to generate all her own energy. So what was really important for that actor was to find the, the stakes, like the, how important it was for her to achieve that task. And that was as important as for uh, a really ambitious young girl who might be at university and want to get her degree. Like for her, it, it was even more important than that because it actually involved, um, uh, it had a religious structure and importance to it and, and to do with the whole world. So the amount of pressure on, on that character was absolutely enormous. So one of the, the, the most difficult things is finding, aligning that actor to the level of the stakes 
like how much it matters if she fails. So the amount of pressure on, on the character is enormous. In terms of consistency uh, in the character, she has times when she interfaces with the, the social world of the family. And so in a sense, the everyday world interrupts her work and, and she loses the plot. And at times, like anyone else, she's on top of it and doing well. And at other times, she's failing and she's in agony and she's really struggling. And uh, at times, she's having to fight the family because they don't understand where she's at. And at times, she's just quiet in the family. Uh, there's a mismatch of realities that she's dealing with the whole time. So it, it, being her is very difficult partly because she has to exist in the two worlds, whereas the family itself is really only existing in one world and witnessing someone in another world. They're not actually inside her world, although the father really does try to sort of tune in and uh, uh, become a part of her world. I think one of the themes of Jenny's work is how uh, we as human beings, and particularly as women, become socialised, have to um, learn, um, adopt and adapt to languages and cultures and ways of being that may not fit them, may not fit what goes on inside or the way they um, perceive or find uh, uh, joy and health and, and abilities. And this is the case, I think, in this family. So. So in some ways there's a natural world and then there's this social world that we need to deal with. And each of the members of this family deal with it in, in very different ways. But what you see is in their struggle to um, uh, find a language and a way of being that suits them, you see how it um, sort of bends them out of uh, shape and out of health and health in the sense of... Um, being able to meet the world and each other uh, in, in, in open and, I, I suppose, ways that don't hurt each other. So you see this struggle. And uh, it's focused on Madeline because there is uh, fear of her not adopting <clears throat> and adapting to um, a stage that's supposed to happen in her life like going to university, getting a job, um, becoming successful. So she's preferring to dig a garden in her home and in a very uh, prescribed way, i.e. with vegetables and plants that go from A to Z. And there's also uh, other things that she does that the rest of the family find difficult, particularly my character, the mother, the other mad, who has adopted a way of being in the world which is uh, to be a, a big social player, a, a high society, a, a successful woman. And that means economically successful, globally having a business that is going to make masses of money. And uh, she's often away from Madeline and the rest of the family, um, just physically not there, not with them. Uh, and so her way of using language and describing uh, the value of what she's doing, it could be seen as you know, not really um, not really helping anybody, including herself. The writing of both of the plays was was quite interesting because, in terms of writing. Uh, into psychosis, one is actually writing uh, through taboos because the, the place of psychosis is, is a taboo place, like it's where, it's where we don't go. It's a place of madness and in a way it's a place uh, that goes beyond logic. And, it, and it's a bit scary because it's about letting go controls. So there's a letting go of controls that needs to happen as the writer 
and um, the act of trust in a sense is to keep going until another logic presents and so uh, there is a logic inside or, or for both of those characters uh, but but uh, in a way I had to enable that logic to start to emerge and follow it a little bit particularly with um, Madeline because uh, of the nature of the psychosis so uh, there would be times when I would be thinking as a, as a writer you can't say that like that's too naive or that's too just doesn't make sense or that just is ridiculous or it's too extreme and I would have to just keep going and I and I did notice that gradually what happened was was a kind of a pattern of another kind of a logic started to emerge so it's not arbitrary you know whatever she's saying is a part of uh, a, a plan is a part of her task and so she's really going somewhere particular with regard to a narrative logic and and a plot to a certain extent some of that was there because sometimes in writing uh, you understand a certain event is going to happen like it comes to you in an intuitive moment and then you have to find your way to that and so there were two things happening there was the f more free form writing but then there was also understanding that there are particular characters in the family and that uh, it, it took a while to understand oh well perhaps the place that the family comes together is at mealtime and that if we have these recurring meals it is then that the dynamics in the family sort of are all sitting in a formal way and get revealed and that then it started to become clear to me that maybe this could hang on on five days or a number of days and then I thought well if we then have it on a number of days perhaps we're on the last five days before her task has to be completed and so gradually it's 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 like those things are tracking alongside the other and for me anyway I mean I think some people uh, plan a, a plot thoroughly and then write and others uh, write very very openly and gradually discover what is is presenting as a writer and and in a way both of those things were um, uh, a part of my process. Mm -hmm.